Okay guys, welcome back to the Ride Right Waxing and UK One Wheel Channel. Just what I'm going to be doing tonight is putting my car on charge. I've actually got 47 miles left and I'm going to run through the app aspect as well. So the uh, dials and bits and bobs over here, I've actually reset this uh, quite a few times through my last drive cycle. So I thought I'd do a full charge to full empty um, so you can understand and see exactly what kilowatts we're generating obviously what kilowatts per hour we're producing, average speed, and then miles more importantly of what we're gonna get out of this Jaguar I-Pace 21 more a year from a full charge down to a relatively low battery charge. So how we firstly do that is we have the trip as you'll see just changing here. So from 24 miles, so we're gonna go through this cycle. Um, and what you need to do is you actually need to push the end of the stalk just here um, to change this. Now you need to get to a miles uh, or kilowatts or average speed. It won't actually change if you are on the date. So by what you need to, when I say change, is you must push and hold this button in. So we're gonna click just to miles. Gonna push and hold the button in now. Wait, it's resetting. Keep your finger on the button till you see the zeros. And then you release the button. Now all of these have changed now to zero. I'm going to put the vehicle on charge. So let's take a quick car, hop out of the car and show you how that's done. Okay, try and keep up. This is going to be a fast one. Onto the app, we got status. Low a battery at 45 miles left, 18% battery charge. We can then go into scheduling. We've got preconditioning at the top. That means you can precondition your car to a temperature to warm up. So when you get into it on a date, time or um, a day of the week that you choose. We've then got charge cycle. So basically you can choose when the car starts to charge and ends its charge. Great for 50 kilowatt systems as much as economy seven. Go back to the main screen and down the bottom here we've got some buttons. We can look at security for a status of locking, not locking. We can look at obviously other things like windows, etc. They shut. Obviously down to status, battery low, service scheduling. We've got all that at your fingertips. We can also change the temperature down below and obviously then start the car up. So basically the car itself will start warming. Um, that could take a few minutes to register. So we can go on to locking. We can lock and unlock the car remotely from anywhere in the world, which is a great little feature. You've also got the beep and flash headlights. If you've lost your vehicle in a car park, I'm not quite sure where you've parked it. The car's not on charge, so we have no functionality in there. It will now come up and say successful. The vehicle has now obviously started to precondition and start. You'll also get a message come up at the bottom just now saying that the battery is too low, so it has actually terminated your last request which is a bit of a pain, but it's a great little feature not to waste any, obviously, additional energy. Obviously, onto the back page, you've got your accounts, you've got app setups, you've got subscriptions, you've got journey times. You can tailor the app to your own requirements. There's a great little feature. You can also ring Jaguar Assist from the app straight away, as well as, obviously, the buttons inside the car from the headlining. So, a little bit of a burn through. Thanks for keeping up. Back to the car. I would say the uh, rear lights and the front lights on this are just so cool. Other nice little feature um, as well as, if I just quickly hit, hit the unlock button, we get the Jaguar puddle light just lit up there. And that comes from underneath the very mucky mirror, which is just in here. And there we go. It's a little bit brighter, could have cleaned it. Okay, so I'll pop open the flap. Now, obviously, if you had the 50 or the 100 kilowatt, you'd pull out the slower bung and you'd put the full size plug socket in here. Um, we're going to pop that back in and we're going to grab the charging cable. Now, this is off of a 13 pin plug socket and we're going to locate that just in there. Light flashes white and it goes to green. So that is now fully on charge. We're gonna quickly jump back in the car and just see what the uh, instrument pack shows us. Okay, so um, off a 13 pin plug socket. Now that is directly into a plug socket in my garage. You must not, and I repeat, must not plug the charging cable into an extension lead because the extension lead cable core is never gonna be as thick as a charging cable that comes with the I-Pace. So, do not please plug your extension, uh, your charging cable into an extension cable because you're just going to possibly cause a fire. It is a major, major fire. So it must have an outside plug socket, 240 volts here in the UK, straight into a plug socket. And you can see that the vehicle's charging. So off of a 13 pin charging socket, it says time remaining a whopping 30 hours and 37 minutes. 
18% charge in the car, 47 miles of range, 406 miles down the bottom there that I've done. Um, if we were to turn the car on, I've turned the vehicle on. Obviously it will not allow me to select drive, any of the following buttons, um, purely and simply, even if I push my foot on the brake and hit the start button, nothing at all, because it's saying disconnect. So it won't let me start the car, charging, disconnect cable before starting vehicle. If we quickly go across onto the charge screen just here by hitting this one just here, we've got the vehicle charging there and it gives me um, basically all the information here charging complete miles 18 percent um, you can precondition and again energy aspect side of things we're not using or driving the car so that doesn't really come into it and we don't have the drive cycle neither uh, functioning because obviously we're not driving the car so the car's on charge let's have a look in the morning and see uh, what it uh, what it reads what the percentage are and uh, yeah basically go from there so Okay, so just sort of, just come indoors and I thought I'd just quickly show you what the app reads. It showed me a 32 hour, 12 minute charge time uh, of, for the iPACE. Um, obviously it has done its uh, what they call isolation test with the vehicle and it's obviously will adjust that time to what it thinks is correct. So let's take a quick look in the morning. Okay guys, good morning. So this has been a solid 12 hour charge and we're up to 44%, still 21 hours, 39 minutes to go. So the actual charge time went up to 33 hours uh, just before I shut off earlier. Um, so that actually, the charge time is pretty much bang on with that. And that's given us 110 miles of range, obviously 44%. So let's just turn the ignition on. Obviously it's telling me the car's charging. Um, there we go. So it's giving me all the information needed. Now, don't forget, this is off a 13-pin plug socket. Um, so this is giving me a charge time. I'm going to put a little video uh, of the, the app in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen now. A 5 miles per hour charge time. Now, that's a 13-pin plug socket um, that's plugged into a, a plug socket in my garage, not an extension lead. Um, and that's given me, like I say, a five miles per hour charge time. So about 110 miles. But I'm going to do something a bit different this morning. I'm going to drive to my place of work. I'm going to actually put this vehicle on charge. I'm going to put it onto a 7 kV charger. And we're going to have a look at the charge time then. And then I'm going to stick it on a 50 kV charger and have a look at the charge time then. And you'll see a big, big difference from the whopping, let's just get rid of that message, yeah. from the whopping 21 hours to go um, and 39 minutes all the way through to hopefully only an hour or so uh, off the 50 kV. So let me show you how to unplug the charge cable. Okay, charge cable's just here. You hit the little button here. This is on the 21 volt a year, which releases, and then you simply just pull it out. So that to one side, the plug's fully waterproof. So let's set off and uh, see what the other charges are showing. Okay, so we have arrived at work. We have 99 miles of range. We started off with 110. Uh, we have got a 9.6 mile, obviously, journey time, which is pretty much on par, so I'm really happy with that. 27 miles, uh, top left-hand corner there of the quadrant square uh, of, obviously, average speed. We generated 1.1 kilowatts over that 9.6 miles, and it was a pretty flat journey, that one, so uh, not too many hills. Uh, but we were running at 32.9 kilowatts per 100 uh, miles. So, um, yeah, really nice and low. Again, nice gentle speed, uh, so no dramas at all. So, running at 40% battery charge. Um, what I'm going to do now is going to hook up to the 7 kilowatt system that you can see. That is my old demo there in front, which was a hybrid Range Rover Sport. Should have done some videos on that, but I will do that in the future. And we're going to plug that in and see what charge time we get out uh, of that one. Uh, weather has decided to take a turn for the worst. I even brought my one wheel product with me uh, so I thought well I'll go out and uh, do some riding while my car was on charge it gave a seven or six percent chance of rain but like good old weather that England is it's decided to throw it down cats and dogs as they say heavens as have opened their doors 
glimpse of blue sky, but the ground will be dry for a while. So anyway, I'm gonna plug into this seven kilowatt system. Then we're gonna plug into the black eye paste just over there. That's plugged into the 50 kilowatt system. And we're gonna do a comparison between all three. So let's get this plugged in. Okay, so we're gonna unplug from the sport. I'm gonna go around and plug it straight in. Again, we're now using the full size port, same as a seven pin socket, same plug format. But on the other end of this one, that's all plugged in. We're gonna have a quick look on here. We've got green on the pillar, which tells us we've got a charge, 32 amp, but this is a seven kilowatt system. Um, and obviously we leave this plugged in and we turn it off um, because obviously we're constantly charging customers' cars. So actually energy uh, supplied since the last turn off is 217 uh, 0.76 kilowatts. So this is a charge master post. Uh, and like I say, charge master um, is just one of the uh, companies that you can use as pop point, but you can get these installed at home. Government in the UK do a grant. I think it covers about 500 pounds. So you end up sp spending about 500 pounds. Now the iPACE can take an 11 ki kilowatt system opposed to the old version, which is a seven kilowatt system, which this post here is. So we're gonna have a jump inside and see what range and what time this gives us plugged in to a seven kilowatt compared to a 13 pin plug socket. So let's take a look. Okay, so what a whopping difference. Six hours, 38 minutes, opposed to your 21 hours that we had on the 13 pin plug socket. So um, let's just turn the ignition on. Get the wipers working. So off that seven kilowatt post there. And again, if this was an 11 kilowatt post, then you would actually get a lot quicker charge time. And that is something that's conventional that you can fit obviously at home. The fast charging, which is a 50 kilowatt, and now you can go up to a hundred kilowatt, your charge times moving forward into the future are gonna change massively. So people have got battery anxiety, charge time worries. Obviously that is all changing. The manufacturers are taking hold of this. The people that are owned like charge, uh, charge master and pop point obviously jumping on board and they're making sure that obviously uh, that's something that's going to change in the future so uh, early doors is yet but again from a whopping uh, 21 hours down to obviously six hours is a big big uh, improvement so we're going to now plug into the 50 kilowatt system and have a quick look at that one and how easy is that to work works slightly different you do need a card for that one um, so yeah let's take a look at that Okay, so this is a 50 kilowatt charging system. Plug is slightly different. If we just grab that out, it's a little bit more heavy duty. And we've got the two additional poles there at the bottom of the plug. So let's just pop that down there and let's just unplug this. So we take out the bottom cover for this one. And what we do is we need a card like so. And then we just simply scan it. Goes authentic authentication, should we say, plug it in. Get my words out. We plug that one in. It will then do a full isolation test, um, making sure that the actual pulse going into the car and the feedback is all correct. So it's just preparing. Hear the click, communicating with the car. Isolation test, if that passes, we'll get a green light onto the vehicle from the white light. Now the white light it says um, is obviously thinking about it. Here we've got another click and there we go green. So that's now charging off a 50 kilowatt system. Let's jump back in the car and have a quick look and see what that looks like. Okay, so jump straight back in the car. We have a two hour, 35, 45 minute charge time. Massively reduced over the seven kilowatt post, which we have just there from six hours and then the 21 hours that we had on the 13 pin plug socket. So huge, huge difference, uh, huge difference. Um, oh, 200 miles, 200, 102 miles of range already from plugging that in. That did say 99 minute, uh, 99 miles a minute ago. And we're at 41% charge. If we just quickly turn the ignition on. We have got, it is 9.09 .09 in the morning at 11.57 to 47. Can't quite decide on the time or 46. Um, that is going to be the full charge complete time. So again, it gives you a real indication how fast a 50 kilowatt system will actually charge up. So 
Really super impressed with that one. Uh, super impressed. And you can imagine how much quicker the 100 kilowatt system that this new 21 model year Jaguar can handle. It will just reduce that time even more so. It'd be like an hour to 45 minutes. Um, you know, for an 80% charge, you're going to be talking half an hour. You know, it's just going to be fantastic. So, uh, like I say, as technology changes, as the companies get more advanced with their the softwares, as much as obviously their hardware that we've got just sat out here. Um, yeah, we're going to see obviously electric vehicles really taking uh, taking a hold i think um it'd be like popping into a petrol station time you've got yourself a costa coffee or a starbucks your car will have enough charge to carry on your journey and obviously if you pre-plan and you can do your preconditioning and you can program your vehicle to charge at home obviously this one's turned off currently you're going to be ready to go so yeah until next time hit that subscribe button though hit that like button i am going to be bringing a video to you with a full charge um so basically on the left hand quadrant over just this side of my screen we're going to zero the the settings and all the clocks um we're going to basically look at how many miles we've got in the car we're going to drive it until basically it's nearly depleted and have a look at a full drive cycle how many miles am i going to get out of a full charge battery uh, basically to empty what's my regeneration going to be what's my trip going to be and that's going to be a really interesting video because people a lot of people have range anxiety as much as charge anxiety and it's just something that we if you are aware of you can get familiar with and obviously you don't need to be worrying about it quite so much but it's all about planning. Electric vehicles are all about planning. So don't hit that, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Obviously, thank you very much indeed for watching. But until next time, I'll see you soon.